You know that feeling when your pet eats or drinks something on the ground before you can get to them. Recently, my dog gave me a scare when she drank murky water from a tarp on the ground that had collected water from some nearby sprinklers. When I took a closer look, there was a dead lizard floating in it. She seemed no worse for the wear, but my mind went to what diseases could be spread by drinking freestanding water. I knew that I had to look into the recent outbreak of leptospirosis in dogs in Southern California. Several people had asked me about it, and I knew now was a good time to take a look into the current situation, even though I hadn't seen a case of leptospirosis in years. In this video, I'm going to dispel some myths about leptospirosis, review the risk factors and symptoms, and ways to keep your pets safe. What is leptospirosis? It's a bacterial organism with many subtypes that affect different animal species. It is also known as a zoonotic disease as it can spread from animals to humans. Each type of leptospirosis has its own set of symptoms in geographical areas where it spreads. The current outbreak in Los Angeles is spread by Leptospira canicola, which is a canine cervar that is common in Mexico and affects the kidneys primarily. Cats are not susceptible to leptospirosis and rarely get it. Leptospirosis bacteria are known as spirochetes, named for their spiral shape. They have a sharp end that allows them to enter the cell mucous membranes by ways of the eyes, nose, mouth, respiratory tract, or cuts in the skin. Leptospirosis is spread in the urine of infected wildlife or rodents. It used to be thought of as a disease of hunting dogs exposed to wildlife or dogs exposed to livestock. It has now become more prevalent in daycare, boarding facilities, and dog parks. It's important to know that humans that come into contact with the urine from infected animals can contract it. Leptospirosis symptoms can be nonspecific and vary from mild symptoms to dogs being severely ill from kidney and or liver failure. Because the symptoms vary so widely, it can often go undiagnosed until it is too late. Dogs develop symptoms five to 14 days after exposure. Symptoms include just being off, or ADR as we say, ain't doing right. Lethargy, vomiting and or diarrhea, decreased appetite, fever, excessive water consumption and urination, elevated kidney and liver enzymes, as well as jaundice. Leptospirosis in humans manifests as flu-like symptoms, fever, severe headache, muscle aches, jaundice, kidney damage, and respiratory distress. Myth number one is that leptospirosis is a problem in hunting and livestock dogs. Myth number two is that it is usually not found in dry climates or urban areas. The outbreak in Arizona and a more recent outbreak in Southern California, both mostly arid climates, dispel both of these myths. Both of these outbreaks occurred in dogs that frequent social situations such as dog parks, boarding facilities, and daycares. Over a 12-year period between 2008 and 2020, there were 80 cases of leptospirosis in Los Angeles County. Compare this to 94 cases in a recent five-month period. Two-thirds of the dogs in the outbreak had frequented dog parks. Most of the infections occurred in dogs that frequented doggy daycare and boarding facilities. Again, no longer a disease seen in hunting or livestock dogs only. If your veterinarian suspects leptospirosis, they may run blood tests to diagnose it. Leptospirosis treatment consists of antibiotics and in many cases hospitalization for supportive care. Survival rates are 80 to 90 percent. It is unfortunate, however, that many dogs that contract leptospirosis will be left with chronic kidney failure. Prevention involves avoiding contact with wildlife, rodents, and livestock or areas where they urinate. Remove brush from areas that could become a haven for wildlife in your yard. Discuss with your veterinarian your risk factors, especially if your dog frequents social situations such as daycare, dog parks, and boarding facilities. If your dog has risk factors, consider choosing the vaccine for lepto only. Leptospirosis vaccine for dogs protects against four serovars versus a combination vaccination, DHLPP, which protects against only two serovars and it contains numerous other antigens that your dog may not need vaccination for. Dogs that have reactions have typically received too many vaccinations at once, and this is especially true for small dogs. I recommend staggering vaccinations when they are necessary. Although my YouTube channel will mostly feature holistic topics, especially nutrition, I will release videos on current events related to pet health. 
Please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a new video is released.